It's all about me. Well, you can probably tell, looking at me, you know, I'm an old hippie, and I, uh, I got involved, I guess you could say, because of the Green Revolution, and I wanted to help people grow food. I wanted to know how to grow food originally. In the early 70s, I was in college, and I had the opportunity to travel some, which is always a high priority on my list. And uh, while I was out traveling, I met many people who were trying to be self-sufficient in farms and realized that it wasn't easy. And it's coming on winter, and maybe they didn't have enough food set down. And it made me more passionate about going back to college and, uh, and really learning how to grow food. Well, I look back on my career and I think I've been so lucky because I love the diversity of plants. I've had the opportunity to travel the world, do research on fruits, vegetables, flowers, cut flowers. I've had the great opportunity to be the director of the MSU Horticulture Gardens for the past 10 years or more. A lot has to do with the, the diversity of the experiences that you have in a subject matter like this. And also to feel that you're helping people in many ways. I mean, all the way from urban horticulture and growing food in our urban environments where people can use it as a form of recreation, but also an important way to feed themselves. Uh, so those things are all important to me. It's all about me. I love being a part of the gardens, and that's been a great way to spend the last 10 years of my career, being the director here at the Horticulture Gardens. They're a fabulous place. We, I think they're a way to inspire people, to console people, to educate people. So being a part of the gardens has always been a passion of mine. Also, the last 10 years, I taught the introductory course for horticulture for all majors and non-majors. And I got a real kick out of being able to see people light up and turn on. You can't really lose when you're teaching about plants, in my mind, unless, unless you really goof up. But uh, the, the students just love the subject matter, and uh, I met some kids that uh, totally have inspired me in the way they live their lives even to this day. You know what I mean, huh? I said hello, I couldn't resist, but you won't. I've always been involved in music. It was just always a part of my life from a young age. I sang and I was uh, involved in plays as a kid. I played clarinet for years and years. I was a band geek. But then somebody, my brother, handed me a guitar and said, here, learn how to play this. You'll like it. And uh, so that was in my 20s. But I didn't really come back when to songwriting until the 90s, which now is a long time ago. But uh, that's when I really started. A friend and I started writing songs at night, and uh, we just had a blast doing it. When I first started writing songs, I think I wrote them for me and expected other people to connect. And as you get out there and get brave enough to go sing people's songs, I started changing the way I wrote songs so that indeed I would connect better with the audience because you can tell I, I like that part of writing songs where you know I really can connect whether it's a child or an adult or a teenager. So I, did, I do think I changed the way I wrote my songs based on the response of the audience. A few years ago, I was invited to give a presentation to the Michigan Herb Associates, uh, the state-level herb society, and they asked me to bring my guitar. And uh, so I ended up writing a couple of songs specifically for them, including horseradish, because that year it was apparently elected as the herb of the year. And who even knew that horseradish was an herb? So it was a great joke right from the beginning. I love the combination of the two. It's, it's great because I love the garden and gardening, and gardens inspire me, so why not put them in the music too? I've performed around town and even beyond that over the years. Uh, a lot of open mics here, there, and everywhere. I used to love Magdalena's Tea House, but uh, that was in Lansing, Michigan. And, uh, but now I've really settled into playing at the farmer's markets. It really suits me. I love entertaining people. They can kind of walk by and laugh and smile and still shop. And I love supporting the local farmers. Well, I appreciate the opportunity. And, 
I think that singer-songwriters are an important part of a community because they have the ability, they may have the ability, to put into words and music some of the things that are going on in a community. And they can do it in ways that sometimes you can't even do in a newspaper or you can't do in an article that you might write. So I really like that singer-songwriters are a part of the farmer's market uh, environment that we have. And I like it that singer-songwriters are something that you guys are covering right this moment. So, cool. Count in the plains.